Hey guys, I'm Kerry. Welcome to my channel. So I'm a Jamaican living in Japan and I've been having a really good time. Um, on this channel, guys, I do all kinds of videos. I do hauls, I do unboxing, lifestyle videos, vlogs, you name it, I have it. <laughs> so if you've applied to the JET program and you were not accepted, this video is for you because in this video, I'm going to tell you five strategies that you can employ to ensure that you are accepted into the program the next time you apply and guys 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 i know that there are other videos on youtube with information about the jet program and you know telling you tips and tricks that you should use to get into the program however guys i assure you my video is a bit different you will learn things in my video that you've not seen elsewhere so please continue watching all right march is a really special month for me because that's the month that I learned that I was accepted into the JET program. Um, and if you know anything about Japan and teaching, one of the best ways you can come to Japan is through the JET program. I remember the feeling like it, it was yesterday. So I know that there are a lot of persons now who are just very happy. I got in, I got in, I got in. However, I always wonder what happens to people when they've not been successful. If you've not been successful, what do you do? Do you like give up or do you try again? In my opinion, you should definitely re-strategize. Please guys, ensure that the moment the application period has opened, you submit your application. Don't wait until it's time for application, then you start preparing them. Have all the documents that you need for the application ready and waiting. Let's say application opens October 2nd. Ensure that your application is submitted on October 2nd. Guys, it really makes a difference. I remember when I applied to the JET program, I was like the sixth person who applied to the program. I was very early. Because I was, my application was punctual, I believe it gave me an advantage. Look at it this way. If you are an employer, let's say you have, you put an ad out in the newspaper for a vacant position at your company. And the moment you put out the advertisement, like an hour, two hours, or even a day after, three persons applied. Who would you consider more? The person who applied the day after, two weeks after, or the person who submitted the application on the deadline. If I were that person hiring, I would give the job to the person who was the most punctual, the person who applied the, the fastest. Yeah, if they're all on the same level, they're all qualified. I like all their personalities. Who do I give the advantage? The person who applied soonest. So it's really important guys that you apply very, very soon. And when I think about even my experiences post JET program in Japan, if I'm to think about the two important jobs that I've gotten after JET, two very competitive positions. For those positions, I was always early in my applications. I think one of the, the jobs that I applied to, I was like the 13th person who applied. And I'm talking about persons, eventually, when other people applied, it got to like a thousand something applicants. But for that job, I was a 13th person. For another job, the job that I just got recently, um, I was the seventh person who applied for that job. Over a thousand persons applied for that job. Do you know how many persons they chose for the job? Nine people. I think that applying early put me in the position where I could interview for that job. If you're like the last person who sent in your application, it's highly unlikely that they're going to get to your application. It's highly unlikely with so many applications coming in. So you need to ensure that you send your application first. That makes sense, don't it? I think it makes sense, so yeah. So ensure guys that you apply as early as possible. Don't wait until it's the second week or third week or the last week or last day before the, the deadline closes because by then it's already too late. Ensure that you get your application in at least latest day is day three. Think of it like it's the morning after pill. It's the emergency contraceptive. You don't want it to pass three days. 
if it passes three days it's already too late in my opinion <laughs> When you're thinking about your hobbies, try to be clever in how you market them. Don't just mention that you like eating and you like cooking and stuff like that, even if it's true. Ensure that you play up or mention hobbies that could actually be of value to them. Remember your area is education. You need to ensure that you're maximizing on whatever you're saying in your application. So even if you have a hobby that you like, if you can't see how this hobby could be of benefit to them don't bother to mention it in my opinion hey guys so i'm actually home editing the video and i realized that i forgot to mention this honestly guys mentioning things that they can benefit from really helps you when you're applying for a job for example um some of you might know that i have an educational channel called um get grammarous with kerry sensei and i've been doing that channel for almost two years now and I've been steadily um, uploading content on that channel. Would you know that of all the, all the jobs that I applied for, every one of them asked me about my channel. Every one of them did. You know why? They asked me because I was very sure, I made sure to put it in my, in my, in my application. I mentioned it in my, in my resume that I make educational content for YouTube. I mentioned in my cover letter that you know in these times that we're in covid um these skills from editing just my technological adeptness and just working making powerpoints making videos making um worksheets my, um could really help me to add value to their school and i also mentioned that if they wanted if they want to get a gist of my teaching styles that they should check out my my youtube channel and i wrote my youtube channel there and guys i kid you not every single one of them asked me not only asked me about it but even some of the jobs that i thought oh maybe they wouldn't be interested in knowing about the channel even jobs like kindergarten even those jobs asked me about it i think what it did is that it enabled them to see like my work ethic my professionalism and just that i'm genuinely passionate about education so i'm not saying that you have to go and start a, a an educational channel but i'm just saying that don't undersell yourself use whatever you can to your advantage if it's not a hobby that they can benefit from don't mention it don't mention that you like eating food why because only you benefit from that they don't benefit from it all right if you're going to mention a hobby Mention hobbies that they can gain from, that they can benefit from. A hobby like videography or phot photography. Those hobbies are really interesting because they are relatable. The students are actually interested in stuff like that. And it's definitely activities that you can be of, that you can use to add value to the schools that you're going to. Remember, this is a competition. You're competing with the other applicants, so you need to ensure that you're shining. Good at singing, you could mention that and other hobbies in your application and then in your interview, find a way, guys, to wiggle it in. Find a way to talk about what you plan to do or what you want to do with these hobbies. If you're interested in photography, you want to have a photography club or you want to capture this or you want to do that. I don't know what you like to do, but whatever it is that you like to do, ensure that you sell the shit out of it. All right? <laughs> yeah. My next tip, guys, is to study a bit of Japanese. I know because I feel like a big hypocrite telling you this to study Japanese because my, I mean, I've lived there for like six years and my Japanese is absolute crap. However, guys, it does make a difference. If it wasn't important, the program wouldn't be paying for you to do the Japan, the Japanese language proficiency test. I feel like a hypocrite saying this over and over again because I know I'm not practicing what I'm preaching, but it does make a difference. Language is a part of the culture here, so it's important that you try to learn it. If you show in your interview that you're actually making an effort to learn a few words, even the function, even something as simple as introduction, you will have an advantage because it, it, it demonstrates to them that, that you have good faith, that you're somebody who's not just going to come to the country and just try to earn and take, 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 but you'll be able to add even more value to the program and get even more from the program. 
because you have the language so yes a few sentences in japanese that is okay i remember when i went to my inter interview i learned a few words in, in in japanese and i was like i mixed japanese with english and i ensured that i was friendly i was charismatic guys have some japanese when you're going in your interview and i'm not talking about like studying and cramming and hurting your head and killing off yourself you know not sleeping losing sleep and just stressing yourself trying to learn the language no that's not what i mean i mean at least learn how to introduce yourself just to show good faith that you're actually invested in the experience you're not just coming here for the anime and the ramen and the manga and the sushi but you're actually invested in learning the culture because there's no better way to learn a culture than through the language another thing guys that i want you to ensure that you put in your application is to mention something in your cover letter mention something about mixed J japan's education system is really changing now in the last decade or so they've really been focusing on not just english education because they realize that it's not really working they want to also focus on global skills <laughs> in your application if you can mention something about mixed honestly it really will work in your favor because i doubt many applicants are going to mention the mixed they're not going to mention it so if you can show your knowledge of the educational system or the direction that the system is going and how you can add value how you can usher in that change the better so ensure that you, if you sprinkle a little mixed in your in your cover letter just to show your awareness of the education system and just to show how committed you are to show how passionate you actually are about education i think it would really help you honestly i think it would this one is my favorite actually this one has to do with teacher training experience guys get some teacher training experience anybody can be a jet right you don't have to have a degree in teaching for you to be a jet however in my experience having been trained in teaching actually gives you an advantage for example i'm teacher trained and when i came here it was like 34 jets 34 jamaicans and more than three third of us had had some experience in teaching so what happens if you don't have teacher training do you just give up don't apply no so this is what you're going to do now guys to give yourself an advantage guys get a certificate in esl education yes guys this is so important and the reason i'm going to tell you that this is actually something that the jet program considers is because of this my own experience as a jet teacher when i came here i had my teaching qualifications however when i was a jet participant they actually paid for me to get an esl certificate a 120 hours esl certificate yeah they paid like maybe 200 and something dollars for me to do it and this is actually something that all jet participants can take advantage of when they've actually been accepted into the program so the fact that they're going to take so much money to send basically send all of us to school so that we can be certified in esl education simply means that this is something that they prioritize this is something that is important to them if you're able to demonstrate that you already possess this qualification this is going to work in your favor undoubtedly this is going to work in your favor it's going to set you apart from somebody else who just has a degree or someone else who even has a, a teacher certificate because this is actually something that the program wants now the certificate that they're usually looking for to be quite honest is a 120 hour certificate that's the one they actually paid for me to do the one that i did i actually did it man with eye to eye 
eye to eye English and it was just really good. The program was very thorough and 120 hours doesn't mean that you have to clock in every day and do one hour until you do 120 hours. No, you can actually work at your own pace. I completed mine in like two weeks. So it's actually something that you can do very, very quickly. If you have that ESL certificate, a 120 hour certificate, that's really good. I do recommend eye to eye English and this is not, not a paid advertisement. What if you're on a budget? What if you can't afford the 200 something dollars certificate? If you can't afford the 200 and something certificate, you can also do other certificates that they have. For example, when I did the eye to eye English 120 hour certificate, I also did a teaching younger learners certificate from them and a teaching business English from them as well. And I still have IELTS for to do because I paid for like a bundle. I think then they, they, they were selling the bundle for like a hundred dollars and I just paid for the three of them to do them. So far I've only done two, so I still have the other on ice, not haven't started that one yet. But you could also do like the small certificates that they have, which are cheaper. Those are cheaper, but you know, it's not a 120 certificate. So I'm not going to tell you that it has the same value, but at least it shows that you have ESL certification. It's still a certification, right? So it's still something that sets you apart from the other applicants. I'm not quite sure how greatly it sets you apart though, but it sets you apart. So I would recommend that you do a certificate, an ESL certificate to help you shine in your application process. But guys, I kid you not, I would not lead you astray. I really believe that these strategies will help you to be successful the next time you apply for the JET program or if it's your first time, that's even better. There's nothing better than doing it right the first time. So please don't give up hope if you weren't successful this year for the JET program. There is next year and the other year. You can always try, you can always improve. But I promise you, if you use the five tips that I've given you in this video, they will help improve your chances. So that's it for this video, guys. <laughs> I love you. Keep sweet, safe, and make good choices. Until the next video. Bye, bye, bye. Mwah.